Thank you, Mr. President, for recognizing my need to make my contribution to the bill before us. I beg that you bear with me a little. I'm not feeling very well this morning, but it would be remiss of me as a young person and part of the governance of this country not to lend my voice to the bill before us. Mr. President, this special prosecutor bill, in my opinion, brings many things into perspective. And from since the announcement, from since the bill started, um, became part of, um, started circulating, we've heard a lot of debate from many quarters of St. Lucia, which in my opinion has been very beneficial to strengthening the legislation before us. It is obvious from what we've seen and what we've heard that this piece of legislation has garnered much interest across the length and breadth of St. Lucia because for so long, we have been marred with allegations of corrupt acts by public officials, public officers, politicians. And so it is of interest to the people of St. Lucia to know that there is a government who is willing to walk that walk in terms of ensuring that that type of behavior is eliminated in the landscape of our island. Mr. President, I listened to the leader of opposition business and he made a comment that it appears that this is simply a election campaign promise that the government is seeking to fulfill. Mr. President, it's always interesting to listen to the leader of opposition business um, on the comments that he makes sometimes because it is this very leader of opposition business who has so many times chastised this administration for not paying the alleged promise $1,500. So in one end of, of, of his breath, he speaks of keeping election promises. And in the other breath, when this government comes to the people, comes to the House of, the, of comes to the Parliament, to do just that, to do justice to the things that, 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 that the people have been clamoring for as a nation, it seems that it is still not enough. And so sometimes he really gets me twisted in my head because it is very confusing to follow his, his, his trend of thought sometimes. Mr. President, while the leader of um, opposition business was making his comments, um, I heard a comment fly through the room. No, when, when the leader of government business, sorry, was, was making his presentation, and he indicated that the leader of this country, Prime Minister Honorable Philip J.P.A., at every opportunity he gets, reminds the men and women around them that they have a duty to this country to be fair, to be honest, to ensure that they operate above board. Mr. President, I heard the comment that apparently he does not trust them. Mr. President, I am a parent of two children. And when I caution my children, Mr. President, it is not because I do not trust them. It is because as a parent, I have a duty to ensure that I keep my children on the straight and narrow. And so I remind them constantly that they are to be honest, that they are to be helpful, that they are to share, that they are to care. It's not because I think they are greedy and uncaring, but because as the parent, I am the shepherd of that flock. And I have a responsibility to ensure that these children become outstanding citizens of this country and so I am quite appalled by the by the comment that it appears that the reason the Prime Minister continues to remind the men and women in his cabinet and around him that they are to operate above board is because he is suspicious or non trusting of him these types of statements have no place in this honorable house mr. president and it has no place in the landscape of st. Lucia what what message are we sending out to the people who are in leadership positions in this country Mr. President, we hear so often of malfeasance 
of misfeasance, of corruption. We 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 listen to to the battles on political platforms and in the in the in the parliament and in the street corners and in the market and everywhere, Mr. President. And the word corruption, like you can say by your party was a fake, you can have all leg, you can point. We hear this so often, Mr. President. And I think as a country, we have a duty and a responsibility to the people of this country, Mr. President, to ensure that we deal with these matters and we deal with it once and for all. Mr. President, as an individual who grew up in a single parent family, a middle class family, an average family, Mr. President, I understand and I empathize with other people within the bracket that I am in, who are the ones who, who pay for the atrocities and the sins of public officers, public officials and politicians when they engage in corrupt or alleged corrupt acts. Mr. President, the monies and the resources of this country that are allegedly plundered are at the expense of the poor, the indigent, the single mothers, the low income earners of this country, Mr. President. Because these resources, and we understand that we are in a country with very scarce resources, Mr. President. These are resources that could otherwise be used to fix a road, to staff a school, to put resources in a hospital, and so on, Mr. President. And it is at the expense of the poor who cannot afford to go to public doctors and public hospitals, but who are robbed short of proper care in a public hospital in this country, Mr. President. And children of parents who cannot afford books and resources for their children, who otherwise could have been assisted by central government programs, Mr. President. They are robbed of, of these opportunities because resources are used in the wrong way in this country. And as a government, Mr. President, this is where the sole or the first responsibility starts to ensure that there are policies and procedures in place to curb that type of behavior. And so that the average citizen like me, Mr. President, can be able to access better facilities and better resources in this country of ours, Mr. President. Mr. President, I have this in patois. Because I have seen tout the world, all the coins that I have seen, that I have seen, Mr. President. Mr. President, the corruption that I have seen in the world, the money and the resources, the richest country that I have served in the country, Mr. President. It's the president, Mr. President. It's my mother and my father that I have seen in the country, that I have seen in the country, that I have seen in the country, Mr. President. It's not that I have seen ni l'argent pour faire any bagay yo vle any manye yo vle yo se moun la ki ka pije plis le se situasyon sa la présenter quoi yo monsieur président because l'argent est qui source pays sa la monsieur président ça servi pour mettre équipement dans l'hôpital so ça marcher dans l'hôpital et pour ça faire un test même si on ni tout l'argent même si on pas ni si on pas ça aller en dedans docteur à côté un docteur privé monsieur président c'est l'argent ça là et ressources ça là si vous êtes servi pour mettre teacher dans l'école bar dans l'école desk dans l'école so ma mère ça aller en dedans caille l'école et que ça confortable et que ça à point monsieur président parce que c'est ma mère ça là qui caille en position de me pour gérer pays ça en manière unique pour aller et moi vle dou bout en de kay sa la ho di a M. Prezida ek di moi si pote tchou legislasyon ki dou van nou because sa i kay fe en se manye i prezante se i kay reduce i kay i kay mene se se krasa la i kay mene i desan mise prezident e sa kay min se resos sa la se lajan sa la kay sa servi pou really mi an impact an le peyi set li si mise prezident mise prezident corrupt public officials and officers and i heard the member the the independent senator just before me referred to that type of behavior like a cancer, Mr. President. Some sort of terminal illness that is robbing the country of living to its full life. Plain and simple, this is what it is. Like a terminal disease, like a thief in the night, coming to plunder the possibilities of the people of this country, generation after generation. 
and a serious government who cares, Mr. President, for the people would understand, like I indicated, that there must be measures in place not to drag down public officials and public officers and politicians, not to drag their name down the drain, but to protect the interests of the citizens, the hardworking citizens of this country. And so this is why this people-centered government is seeking to do just that. And like I said, the, the, and I have been in, 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 in rooms as well, where in, in spaces where I've heard the Honorable Prime Minister do just what I indicated before, that he says to the men and women around them that you must never forget the purpose for which you are, are in office. He says it all the time. And I, as a young person, Mr. President, I mean, I can speak, I cannot speak to any other prime minister who perhaps have done it, because perhaps I have not been in a space with them where I can attest to the fact that they've said it, but I can attest to this honorable prime minister in the person of Honorable Philip J. Pierre, he says it all the time. And for me, walking into a space or sitting around a table with the Honorable Philip J. Pierre and hearing the passion in his voice when he speaks to that matter, Mr. President, it brings me great hope that there is some sense of, of, of hope for the future of this country when it comes to political life, especially, Mr. President. For too long, the people of this country look upon politicians like thieves and liars and, and, and volleys and all sorts of things, Mr. President. And they have a responsibility. We have a responsibility as, as persons within the, within the frame of, the, of, the, of, of public and within the frame of governance to ensure that we do not, we do not um, support that type of behavior. Mr. President, in another life, during the period of, say, 2012, thereabout, I served on the Constituency Council of Vufort North. Again, Mr. President, there was a lot of speculation in terms of incidents and, and, and things that had happened within that council. Um, led at the time by an individual with partisan political aspirations. And I am not one who is quick to judge or quick to point fingers, Mr. President. And so I heard and I questioned, I, I had conversations with the individual in question because the individual and I have a, a, a line of communication. And I asked and I, 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 I tried to gather the information. Because, Mr. President, like I indicated before, I understood too well that if, in fact, these things that were alleged were actually happening, I understood how it negatively affected the constituency in which I live. Mr. President, I live in a community that does not have motorable roads. I live in a community that at some point had bad playing fields and all sorts of things. And, Mr. President, when I heard of these happenings, these occurrences, it, it troubled me. But it was not until I became a member of the council, a councillor on the board of councillors, that I, it really started to sink in, Mr. President, in terms of some of the things that were questionable happening within that council, Mr. President. I, I do not want to delve very deep into them. I think that a few years ago, and I think somebody before me indicated that, you know, sometimes these investigations and these reports are made and they sit there. And so it brings to mind immediately the town and village report of 2000 that, that, that was published between the 2011-2016 period. And Mr. President, like I indicated, perhaps I cannot speak of the, the happenings in other councils around the island. But, but there is one example when I saw the documents in the office of the council, Mr. President, and I remember this day so many years ago, like it was just yesterday, that I was seated at a board, me board meeting and the chairperson of the council on the day announced that the board of councillors would have gone into the council office on a particular date to look at the files and so on of the council. And I remember clearly when she said that, knowing that there had been a lot of talk and a lot of allegations, I shook my head because I figured, boy, she just made a very big mistake. She should not have announced that we would have, the, as a board of councillors, that we would have gone in and look at the, 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 the instruments and the documents of the council. And so some of us suggested that we did not go in on the, on the particular date, but that we go in on a, previous, a prior or subsequent date. And that's exactly what we did, Mr. President. 
And I remember clearly walking into the office with my colleague counselors, and we indicated to the clerk at the time that we had come to look at the documents and we asked for staff files and we asked for project files and so on. And the, the, the clerk vehemently detested Mr. President. And so, of course, it, it begged again the question of whether the allegations were perhaps, were perhaps correct. Why is it that a clerk, a, a officer of the government of St. Lucia, would have had issues with the, the board of councillors of the council, Mr. President, coming in to review the files of the councillor, relatively new council coming in. Of course, you want to know what has been done, what spending, where you're going. The next thing we know, the director responsible for local government was called and we were reported to have come into the office seeking files, Mr. President. And I remember very clearly seeing a file, Mr. President, that indicated that a young lady from the community of Vijay, where I am from, and Mr. Mr. President, Vijay is a relatively small community. There is not much that happens in that community that you don't know at some point. That a, that a contract had been awarded to a contractor to install pipe bond water for that young lady, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. That the pipes had been bought from a particular supplier and the contract had been issued to the supplier. Lo and behold, Mr. President, unfortunately, a few years later, that young lady lost her house by fire. And up to today, Mr. President, I will continue to say that perhaps if in fact she had had pipe bond water at her house, the residents of the community perhaps would have been able to put that blaze under some sort of control because there would have been water in that house that they could have been used. But there was no water. There was no water. She lost her house many years later by fire and there was no pipe bond water, but there was a contract issued to run pipes and, and connect water for that lady. But yet still a town and village council report is, is taking dust somewhere. And I'm not afraid to stand up here and say it. And I know perhaps there, were, there, there are eyebrows and so on. Because the, the report was put together under previous SLP administration. There, there is no bones about that. There is no, there is no running away from the reality of it. That is where it was done. And then perhaps, like, like the independent senator indicated, perhaps the resources, I do not know what the reason was, to do what was necessary to ensure that we could have followed up on these things and ensure that if in fact what, what was indicated in the report was what, how, it, how it was presented, that these persons were made to pay for the atrocities, Mr. President. Mr. President, I could think of so many things that we could use these plundered monies or these whatever happens to the resources to do. Being in the fishing industry, and I know some, I think it was at the last sitting, the leader of, of um, opposition business um, um, pointed out Senator Shallery to speak about the fishers. So I'm going to speak about the fishers today, Mr. President, in relation to this bill, because I can readily indicate so many avenues that resources of this country can be used to alleviate the plight of fishers in this country. The fishers have been clamoring for the entire existence. For a pension scheme, for example, these these resources can be used to do things like that, Mr. President. And so when I indicated before that it is the poor people of this country who suffer the most when monies are unaccounted for or when contracts are pampered or when monies are used for things that are, that are, that are um, questionable and so on. These are some of the things. After school programs for our children, like I said, better equipped hospitals, support systems of single mothers. These are the things that these resources can be used for, Mr. President. And so we must, as a country, take a stand against this thing. Mr. President, if we go to section 26 of the Act, and um, the independent senator spoke a lot about or beat about whistleblowers. And I, when you go to, we go to section 26, Mr. President, it speaks to protection of persons making a complaint. And this section, I think this, this section is quite important and, and it, that this, this act, this bill could not be what, in terms of its intention if it did not give some level of protection to persons making complaints, Mr. President. And even in speaking about that, Mr. President, we know that we, we've heard in terms of talks of corruption, I said, like I said, whether it's on the political platforms or in the House, that sometimes you get um, senior public officials in government departments, permanent secretaries, um, accountants, and so on, who indicate to you that 
they, they acted because they got a directive from somebody above them. And, and sometimes they do not report it or they do not, they simply follow through because there is a, there is a fear in terms of their job security, Mr. President. And so I think that this section of the, of the bill is so important because it now gives people like that the ability to feel comfortable in a space that if they do feel that, the, that whatever they're asking, they, that they are asked to do is not in keeping or it's not right, they feel that it's wrong, they feel that it's illegal, that they can seek some sort of reprieve and they are protected by that section, Mr. President. Mr. President, the time has come for it not to be simply name-calling and finger-pointing, but a time to act. And too often, there is a lot of talk, a lot of talk about things that should, could, should, perhaps, and so on. But then the action and the support is very important, Mr. President. Mr. President, when you go around and you listen, especially to young people, they are either drawn to political life or public life because they feel that politics is for persons with loose behavior who have a get rich fast mentality because there is not these sort of systems to 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 reprimand and, and so on the behaviors of, of especially politicians mr president or you get persons, young persons, who simply tell you they're staying away from it because they do not want to be associated with that or, or, or ascribe to, to what we have, we, have, we have come to label politicians and, and persons of that, of that um, class with Mr. President. But there are persons in this country who have a deep, innate desire to serve the country, Mr. President. And so I think... Uh, uh, a piece of legislation of that magnitude together with some of the others that have existed and, and we always talk about the need to educate people about, about the legislations and so on and I think that is so important not just for this new piece of legislation but even for some that have existed that are in existence we need to educate people we need to let people know what it is and what sort of reprieve they have on it and what they can do and what it, it's intended to do but there are people like I said who are simply patriotic and they are guided by rules and regulations, and they want to serve the country in particular capacities. And I think this piece of legislation, with its intention, will really entice persons who fall into that category to not stay away from, from political life and public service, Mr. President. Mr. President, the time has come where it is no longer okay for me or for anybody to stand on one side of this House of Parliament and to throw and cast aspersions on persons, colleagues in, in, within the same parliamentary, um, within, within the same House of Parliament. I mean, over the, over the past years, over the past six or seven years, six years, there about, we've heard a lot of things, a lot of things. And whereas some may, and it has been said, that some feel that this piece of legislation is simply an attempt to go after particular people. I remember some time ago, Mr. President, listening to the to the to a, a, a debate on a, on a piece of legislation the amendment to the crown proceedings bill and this same aspersions were spewed that the intent of the then administration led by 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 the now leader of opposition was intended for just that purpose to go after certain people so of course perhaps the reason why the leader of opposition business can speak fluently and eloquently that perhaps this piece of legislation is intended to do that is because he knew quite well having been a part of that cabinet then apparently understood that that is why that that piece of legislation was amended I, I, I mean, I can't take that away from him. He knows what he knows, and so perhaps. But I, I, will, I will continue to say, Mr. President, that this piece of legislation is intended not simply to fulfill a, a political promise, Mr. President, but it is for the people of this country to, be, to feel comfortable and to know that the government of this country Successive administrations, Mr. President, is concerned that there is a reduction or zeroing of the occurrences or alleged occurrences of corruption in this country, Mr. President. We have heard a lot of talk about 
the corruption perception index, Mr. President. And this is an important index because I'm pretty sure perhaps um, Senator, Sen independent Senator Aziz will agree with me when I say that when persons are looking to invest in the tourism sector and when individuals are looking for a tourism destination, perhaps these are some of the things that they look at. Investors look at these things, they look at the, the, the corruption perception index. And so as a country, we must be able to show some level of slate in, like I said, not just talking the talk, but doing what needs to be done to change that environment and to change the perception of potential investors to this country, Mr. President. When you look at the corruption perception index, Mr. President, it, it says that it measures how corrupt a country is, how corrupt the public sector of a country is perceived to be, um, and it is one of the most widely used corruption index in the world. The data is said to be collected from different surveys and assessment and collected by a variety of reputable institutions such as the World Bank and the World Economic Forum. Mr. President, if we look at the history of St. Lucia, we have a lot of projects and a lot of um, um, agreements that have been signed and, and fund, projects that have been funded by institutions such as the World Bank. And so, when you look at a corruption perception index, and then we re understand that some of the information collected to, to determine your position you know, your ranking in terms of corruption, the corruption perception, some of that information is derived from reputable institutions such as the World Bank. It is telling, Mr. President, it is very telling where we find ourselves on that, on, on, on that line, Mr. President. Mr. President, section two of the bill, looks at the interpretation on the interpretation defines corrupt index corrupt conduct sorry and the schedule further highlights what are the behaviors that are considered or understood to be corrupt conduct mr president and and i want to appeal to persons who hold public office to ensure that they understand what these mean Although I see perhaps a whole other, a whole other turnaround of, of, of things, Mr. President, because you know every time you, you put legislation in place, you put rules and regulations in place, people who are hell-bent on doing things in a particular way, and people who are hell-bent on breaking the laws, they find ways around it, Mr. President. But I am confident that, like we have indicated before, yes, there is a... a, a a director of public prosecution, but like in the submission of the independent senator, a, a office of the director of public prosecution who has the responsibility for a broad spectrum of, of, of prosecution, Mr. President. And so I think that the, the specific, the, the focus, the specialization, and those of us who are involved in businesses and so on, we understand, even within a family, we understand that you assign particular roles to particular people, and that level of specialization, Mr. President, creates greater efficiency, Mr. President. And I so this, and I think this is what this intends to do, to create that greater level of specialization, and so to bring greater focus Focus to actually doing what needs to be done, the investigation, the prosecution, and so on, Mr. President. Mr. President, as I, as I close, a question was, was thrown across the room in terms of the U.S. visa, and um, apparently it seemed to be based on the submission of the leader of, of opposition, it seems to be an indicator of your character, your something, I don't know. I do not own a US visa. And I, I, I now I'm, I'm trying to figure out, boy, if it's because, well, what is the reason I don't own one? Don't Growing up in a single parent family, Mr. President, this was not a priority for my mother. It could not have been a priority for my mother to pay a couple hundred dollars to even get me a passport. I got a passport when I started working. I applied for a St. Lucian passport. And so I, I, I did not have access to a passport for less a US visa. And I have not up to now have a need to apply for a US visa. And so I am not ashamed to say that I am not a holder of a US visa. I have not had a reason to travel to the US. And perhaps when I do have a reason to travel to the US, I will then make an application for a US visa. 
visa. But I think it is absurd that we are going to use that as a criteria to determine whether you are of proper standing or not. Some of us really have not had a need or we can't afford it. I am not ashamed to say that at that time my mother could not even afford to apply for a solution passport for me. Because the priority was putting food on the table and ensure that I got the a proper education, Mr. President. I remember you have 15 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. President. And so, Mr. President, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's, I am learning so much sitting around this table. And all type of learning is good learning, eh? because you learn the bad that you then learn to dispel, and you learn the good that you then learn to apply to your everyday life. And so it is a learning experience. And some of the things that are thrown across the table are really, it, it really, it, it really does. And so sometimes I ask myself, if it does that to me, how the what sort of emotion it evokes in, in the other average solutions, Mr. President, who perhaps don't even have an opportunity to speak about how they feel about them, Mr. President. And so with this sh very short submission, Mr. President, I want to reiterate my support for the bill before us, Mr. President. But like, my, like the independent senator who went before me to implore the government that the execution and the success of this office, this office of a special prosecutor, depends a lot on independence of the office of the special prosecutor as well as resource allocation, Mr. President. These two things I think are very important to the success of this venture and it is very important in its, in its, in its um, actualization to ensure that as a country we can now feel comfortable in knowing that we are putting things in place to stamp out the acts of corruption in this country and to be able to use the resources of this country to uh, the greater benefit of the, 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 um, the citizens of this country. With this, Mr. President, I thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you.